Hello friends, I welcome you to part 4 of learning physics with IBM. Do not forget we are still looking at oscillations and simple harmonic motion. Specifically this is part 4. Remember this is physics 9702, advanced structured equations, that is paper 4. So these are past paper questions or solved past paper questions and don't forget to subscribe, share the videos with the friends, download the document in the, des the video description so that you can always follow up uh, in a hard copy format. Throughout this video, we shall discuss our questions relating to the types of oscillations, sympharmonic motion, forced and damped oscillations, energy of oscillations, uh, graphs, uh, resonance, and a lot many more. So without wasting time, let's move to uh, the past paper document so that we continue from where we stopped in part 3. So in part 3, I think we stopped on page 370. And in part 4, I want us to start from page 370. Okay, state what is meant by simple harmonic motion. At this point now, simple harmonic motion is something you're familiar with. So for simple harmonic motion, acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement. Acceleration and displacement are in opposite directions. So acceleration is directly proportional. displacement acceleration is directly proportional to displacement acceleration and displacement acceleration and displacement in the or is in the opposite direction in opposite directions so when you talk about simple harmonic motion acceleration is directly proportional to displacement the acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions it's not different directions it is specifically opposite a troll of mass m is held on a horizontal surface by means of two springs one spring is attached to a fixed point p the other spring is connected to an oscillator as shown in the figure here the springs, each having spring constant 130 newtons per meter, are is extended. The oscillator is switched off. That means we are going to have free oscillations now. The troll is displaced along the line of the springs and then released. The resulting oscillations of the trolley are simple harmonic. The acceleration A of the troll is given by this expression. X is the displacement of the trolley from its equilibrium position. The mass of the trolley is 840 grams. Calculate the frequency F of oscillation. So we know the general equation A is equal to negative omega squared X. So we are now comparing. So when we compare the two equations, omega squared is going to be equal to twice K over M. But remember and not forget omega is 2 pi F. So it means we shall say that 2 pi times f, which is squared, is equal to 2k, where this is 2 times, we saw k was 130, divided by m. m is 840, which is 0 0.84. So we'll first of all find the square root, because the other side is squared, we find the square root. Then I divide by 2 pi.
So I'm getting this as 2.8. I can check it again. Divide by 0 0.84 square root. Then divide by 2 pi. So I'm getting 2.8 hertz as the frequency. The oscillator and B is switched on. The frequency of oscillation of the oscillator is varied. So when the oscillator is switched on, we now have forced oscillations. The frequency of oscillation of the oscillator is varied, keeping its amplitude of oscillation constant. The amplitude of oscillation of the trolley is seen to vary. The amplitude is maximum at a frequency calculated in B. State the name of the effect giving rise to this maximum. Of course, we have already seen this. This is resonance. When the driving frequency matches with the natural frequency, the system absorbs maximum energy and vibrates with the maximum amplitude. We say resonance has occurred. At any given frequency, the amplitude of oscillation of the trolley is constant. Explain how this indicates that there is a, re a resistive forces opposing the motion of the trolley. They are saying at any given frequency, the amplitude of oscillation of the trolley is constant. But remember, this oscillator has been switched on. Why isn't the amplitude going beyond? Because the oscillator is adding additional energy to the system. So if the, if the oscillator's energy is not enough to change the amplitude, then it is only because there are damped forces which are using part of the energy supplied by the oscillator that it cannot cause an increase in amplitude. So we simply say the oscillator supplies energy continuously. The oscillator supplies energy continuously. So without any loss, without loss of energy, the amplitude will continuously decrease, increase. So without, if there was no loss in energy, so without loss of energy, the amplitude the amplitude would continuously increase. The amplitude would continuously, I don't know why I failed to spell continuously, increase. So since there is some loss of energy, the amplitude remains constant, so the, some of the energy supplied by the oscillator is wasted or is converted, is used to overcome the resistive forces. Therefore, that's why the amplitude can remain constant. But if there were no resistive forces, the energy supplied by the oscillator would be seen as an increase in amplitude. But since there are resistive forces, some energy must be lost. That's why we can see that the amplitude remains constant. A U-shaped tube contains some liquid. The liquid column in each half of the tube has length L, as shown here. The liquid columns are displaced vertically. The liquid, is, the liquid then oscillates in the tube. The liquid, the liquid levels are displaced from the equilibrium position, as shown in the figure. The acceleration A of the liquid in the tube is related to the displacement X by the equation A is equal to negative G over LX, where G is a constant. Explain how the expression shows that the liquid in the tube is undergoing simple harmonic motion. So let's look at this, this expression. First of all, G is acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant, and L is the length of the liquid column, which is also a constant. That means G over L is a constant. G divided by L is a constant. 
and if it is a constant, what does that imply? This implies that acceleration is directly proportional to displacement. Acceleration is directly proportion to displacement. That's one defining thing. Then we see in the equation that there is a minus sign. The minus indicates that the minus shows shows that acceleration and displacement. are always in the opposite directions. So the minus indicates that the acceleration and the displacement are always in opposite directions, or the acceleration is always directed towards a fixed point, that is the equilibrium position. The length L of each of the liquid column is 18 centimeters. Determine the period T of the oscillations. So we have already seen from here that A is equal to that. We can compare with A equals to negative omega squared X. You see omega squared is going to be G over L. So we have that omega squared, omega squared equals to G over L. Don't forget, that omega is 2 pi f, which is 2 pi divided by period. So I'll simply say that since I want the period, I will simply say that 2 pi over period squared is equal to g. g is 9.81. And the length L is 18 centimeters, which is 0 0.18. I'll begin by dividing and finding the square root. Divide, find the square root, 9.81, 0.18, square root. Then I get the reciprocal, 1 over answer, then times 2 pi. So whichever way you do it, as long as you solve for t, and t is 0 0.851. So I'll just write t as 0 0.85. You should be able to solve such a simple equation. Uh, find the square to both sides, cross multiply, or get the reciprocals both sides. Find t. So t is 0 0.85 seconds. You can also verify. The oscillations of the liquid in the tube are damped. That is, they lose in, they must be losing energy. In any one who complete cycle of the oscillations, the amplitude decreases by 8 point zero percent of its value at the beginning of the oscillation the amplitude decreases by eight percent of its value at the beginning of the oscillation determine the ratio energy of oscillations after three cycles over initial energy of oscillations so the initial energy of oscillations let's first of all we know that energy is equal to a half m omega squared x naught squared. Initial energy of oscillations, I'll call it E1, is going to be a half m omega squared x naught squared. Let me say that energy after one oscillation, because remember, the amplitude decreases by 6.0%. That means what remains is 94%. That's uh, the, what remains as, the, that's 94% of x naught is what remains. So energy, I will call this one E2, is going to be a half m omega squared. The amplitude is now 0 0.94 x naught, and this is squared. Then, after, now this is the new amplitude, remember? Again, uh, uh, after this is this was initial energy. This is the first cycle. Then after the second cycle, 
the energy which I will call E3 is going to be a half m omega squared. So again, the energy, uh, the amplitude which remains after the second cycle should be 94% of this one which is there. So it is again going to be 0 0.94 of 0 0.94 x naught, and that is squared. Then energy after the third cycle is going to be equal to a half m omega squared. Again, the amplitude that remains is 94 of what is already there. So this would be 0 0.94 times 0 0.94 um, x naught. Sorry, 0 0.94 times 0 0.94 again times 0 0.94 of x naught. So the amplitude which is there already is 0 0.94 times 0 0.94 x naught. So the amplitude after another third cycle will be 0 0.94 times 0 0.94 times 0 0.94 x naught, and this is squared. So that is the energy after three cycles. Let me call this E4. This was the initial energy. Why can't I call this one E naught? This is the initial energy after one cycle, after two cycles, after three cycles. So we want the ratio, initial energy after three cycles, over initial energy after three cycles, I mean energy of oscillations after three cycles over the initial energy. So we can now find the ratio here. The ratio is going to be zero, I to be a half m omega squared into this is going to be 0 0.94 raised to power 3 times x naught cubed. I mean x naught squared, divide by the initial energy, which is a half m omega squared times x naught squared. So we notice that this is this is cancelling, and this is also cancelling. And we are remaining with 0 0.94 raised to power 3. So the ratio... Um, I do it correctly. No. This is 0 0.94 power 3 again squared. There's a square here. 0 0.94 power 3 raised to power 2. So I have this is 0 0.83. I now square it. So that is squared. And this is giving me 0 0.6. 899 or approximately 0 0.69 yeah so this is 0 0.93 power 0 0.94 power 3 that is this power here but again there is a square here so that is a 0 0.69 The body undergoes simple harmonic motion. The variation with this displacement x of its velocity v is shown here. So we can see from the graph this is amplitude against the velocity. We can see the maximum velocity here. The scale on the vertical is 0 0.1 divided by 5, which is 0 0.0. So that means this value here is 0 0.42, negative 0 0.42. Then on the, uh, the maximum displacement, we can read here the scale on the x-axis is 0 0.02 divided by 10 small squares, which is 0 0.002. So this is 0 0.04, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this times 5. 0 0.02 times 5 to become 0 0.01. I mean, yes, 0 0.01. We add it to this, so this point is 0 0.05. It's actually in the center. Okay, let's now answer the questions.
State the amplitude x0 of these oscillations. So we just look at the, where the graph crosses the x-axis. And that is zero. We have just seen that is 0 0.050 meters. Catch the period. Catch the period of these oscillations. Remember, this is a graph of velocity. Maximum velocity is equal to omega times maximum displacement. We have the maximum displacement. Also note that omega is 2 pi over t. From the graph, I see maximum velocity is 0 0.42. I have just seen it here. 0 0.42 is the maximum velocity. So I will say 0 0.42 is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. Then times maximum displacement, 0 0.50. So I'll just cross multiply and find t, make t the subject. So that is 2 pi times 0 0.05 divide by 0 0.42 so i'm getting the period as 0 0.75 seconds on the figure label with the p a point where the body has maximum potential energy recall the expression for potential energy e potential is equal to a half m omega squared x squared so when x is maximum, potential should also be maximum. So it means this should be a point uh, where the graph crosses the x-axis. So I will call this point P, and this one also can be point P. Those are the points where um, the body has maximum displacement. So you label this point P, and this point where it crosses the x-axis, because where the amplitude is maximum, the potential energy is maximum. We have labeled P. A bar magnet is suspended from the free end of a spring as shown here. One pole of a magnet is treated in a coil of wire. The coil is connected in series with a switch and a resistor. The switch is open. That means we don't expect a damping because the coil, there is no induced EMF in the coil. The magnet is displaced vertically and then released. The magnet oscillates with a simple harmonic motion. State Faraday's law. We stated the Faraday's law many times in magnetic fields. So we know that the magnitude of the induced EMF is directly proportional. to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. So that is Faraday's law. We stated it several times. The switch is now closed. Now, if we close the switch here, note that this is a magnetic, there's a magnetic field due to the magnet, and we have a coil of wire, which is a conductor. Now, it means when we close the switch, a moving, the moving magnetic field is intercepted by the coil. Okay, so the switch is now closed. Explain why the oscillations of the magnet are damped. Of course, as the magnet moves, the coil cuts the magnetic field. By Faraday's law, an EMF is induced in the coil. If an EMF is induced in the coil, a current is going to flow through the wires and power will be dissipated in the resistor. Remember, the thermal energy dissipated in the resistor is being derived indirectly from the energy of oscillations of the magnet. So some of the energy of oscillation of the magnet is dissipated as thermal energy in this resistor here. Therefore, the oscillations will die out. We can also explain the same by using uh, Lenz's law. The induced current or the induced currents cause a magnetic field around the coil. This magnetic field tends to oppose whatever is causing it. Therefore, it tends to oppose the free movement of this magnet. Therefore, the magnet will be damped. So we can explain in two ways. Let's start with the easiest one. 
so there is there is going to be a current in the in the circuit so the coil cuts the magnetic field the coil cuts the magnetic field so there is an induced current there is an induced current in the circuit the current the current causes thermal energy The current causes thermal energy to be dissipated in the resistor. The current causes thermal energy to be dissipated in the resistor. This thermal energy, remember, is derived from the energy of the magnet or the energy of oscillations. So this thermal energy comes from from the oscillations or the energy of oscillation of the magnet. Alternatively, alternatively, if we know that the car the coil cuts the magnetic field and there is there is an induced current in the circuit. So we can look at this current as causing a magnetic field. So we can say the current or the current causes causes a magnetic field. around the coil so the two fields uh, the two fields cause an opposing force on the mag or this field causes or these fields cause an opposing um, force on the magnet so the current causes a magnetic field around the coil and the field Causes an opposing force on, on the magnet that is in accordance with the Lenz's law. The current causes a magnetic field around the coil. Uh, let me just say these fields because they could be many since they are eddy current. These fields cause these fields cause an opposing force on the magnet. So that's why now the oscillations are going to die out. A pendulum consists of a metal sphere P suspended from a fixed point by means of a thread, as shown here. State what is meant by simple harmonic motion. So we now know acceleration. Acceleration is directly proportional to displacement. Acceleration is directly proportional to displacement. The acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions.
So the acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions. Or we could say the acceleration is always directed towards the equilibrium position. That is simple harmonic motion. You can't afford to fail to define simple harmonic motion. Okay. The variation of the velocity view of this of a sphere P where sorry of, of a sphere P with the displacement X from its mean position or equilibrium position is shown here. So still on this graph, before we go any further, we can see a few important things. Number one, we could see the maximum velocity is somewhere in the center here. We can see the, the, the scale on the vertical is 0 0.1 divided by 5 small squares, that is 0 0.02. One small square is 0 0.02. Now the, this circle is passing in the center of the square, 1, 2 and a half. So we say 2 and a half, that is 2.5 times 0 0.02 to get the maximum velocity. So this is going to be 2.5 times 0 0.02. So I'm adding 0. Uh, 0, this is 0 0.05, I add it to, two, to 0 0.2, I add it to this value here, so this gives me 0 0.25, so this is 0 0.25 negative, then maximum displacement is here or here, the scale on the x-axis is 2 divided by 5, which is 0 point, I think, 0.4. So this is 2.4, I mean 8.4, 8.8. So the amplitude here is 8.8. .8. Let's now answer the question. Use the figure to determine the frequency f of the oscillations of the sphere, p. Remember, we have just seen that if we know that velocity is equal to omega square root of x naught squared minus x squared, velocity is maximum when x is 0. So maximum velocity is omega times x naught. And also recall that omega is 2 pi times f. So it means v naught, which we have got as 0. Point, v naught, we have got it from the graph as 0 0.25, is going to be called omega, which is 2 pi times f, times maximum displacement, which is 8.8 .8 times 10 power negative 2 change it to meters. So I will just divide straight away without wasting time. 0 0.5 divided by 8.8 .8 exponent negative 2 divided by 2 pi. And I'm getting f as 0 0.45. So f is 0 0.45. The period T of the oscillations of sphere P is given by this expression here. So that is the period. Use the fee, use where G is the accession due to gravity or accession of free fall. Use your answer in B, which is the frequency, to determine the length L. Remember, frequency is equal to 1 over T. It is 1 over period. So we shall say that 1 over frequency is 1 over period we have got the frequency. So it means period is uh, period is 1 over what? 1 over f. And the period is given by this. So I will say 1 over f, which is 1 over 0 0.45, should be equal to 2 pi square root of L divided by 9.81. I will first of all uh, divide, open brackets, 1 divided by 0 0.45. And I divide this by 2 pi, 2 pi, then I square to remove the square root, I'm squaring both sides, then I cross multiply by 9.81, and I get 1.2, this is an easy th uh, expression to solve, so this is 1.23 meters, you can also check, solving this is, is, is an easy is easy mathematics.
Another pendulum consists of a sphere Q suspended by a thread. Spheres P and Q are identical. The thread attached to sphere Q is longer than the thread attached to sphere Q is longer than the thread attached to sphere P. We are seeing that the period is directly proportional to the square root of the length. Sphere Q is displaced and then released. The oscillations of sphere Q, of sphere Q have the same amplitude as the oscillations of sphere P. So X is X naught is the same for P and Q. On the figure sketch, the variation uh, of the velocity V with displacement X for sphere Q. So what is going to change is the maximum velocity because uh, the maximum displacement is the same. We know that velocity is equal to omega times X naught, which is the same as 2 pi F times X naught, or this is going to be 2 pi over T times X naught. They say the oscillations of Q have the same amplitude as the oscillations of X naught, so this is the same. But the thread attached to sphere Q is longer than the thread attached to sphere P. And the period is directly proportional to the length. So period is directly proportional to length. Because the thread is longer for Q, then the period is higher. And if the period is higher, then if PT is higher, then V is going to be smaller. Because we are seeing V is inversely proportional to, to T. For that reason, we are going to draw a graph which has a smaller maximum velocity. I repeat. We are, they have said the attached thread to sphere Q is longer than the thread to sphere P. And we see that period is affected by length. They are directly proportional. Period is directly proportional to the root of L. If the length is longer, it means the period is also going to be higher. And if the period is higher, we are seeing from the expression of velocity, period is inversely proportional to the, uh, to the, to the velocity. So if the period is higher, then the velocity is going to be smaller. So we are going to draw a new sketch of graph with the same amplitude x naught, but with a smaller maximum velocity. So I just come back here, and I look for a smaller maximum velocity. I can take it to be 2, 0 0.2. It is the new maximum velocity, but the amplitude is the same. So I will draw a graph inwards. So that is the new graph which is required. The new graph shows a new value of a maximum velocity being less than the first value because velocity is inversely proportional to the period, yet the period is directly proportional to the length. Okay. A simple pendulum consists of a metal sphere suspended from a fixed point by means of a thread, as shown here. So we see the displacement is 12.7. The maximum uh, height from the equilibrium position is 0 0.9. The sphere of mass 94 grams is displaced to one side through a horizontal displacement of 12.7. From the, se the center of gravity of the sphere is at 0 0.9 centimeters vertically. It rises vertically 0 0.9790 centimeters. The sphere is released so that it oscillates. The sphere may be assumed to oscillate with a simple harmonic motion. State what is meant by simple harmonic motion. So we know that acceleration, acceleration is directly Acceleration is directly proportional Acceleration is directly proportional to displacement
acceleration and displacement are always are always in opposite directions So acceleration is directly proportional to displacement. Acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions, or so the acceleration is directed towards equilibrium position. State the kinetic energy of the sphere when the sphere returns to the displaced position shown in the figure 3.1. So the kinetic energy when it returns here. Remember, this is maximum displacement. Kinetic energy at maximum displacement is zero because the velocity at maximum displacement is zero. Remember, we have that V is equal to omega square root of x naught squared minus x squared. When x equals to x naught, V is zero. And when V is zero, kinetic energy is zero. So this is going to be zero. Calculate the total energy of the oscillations. So total energy... E total total energy is still going to be um is going to be the same as uh, potential energy because at maximum height the energy the potential energy is going to be equal to mgh so total energy is equal to the maximum potential energy which is going to be mgh so E total is going to be the mass. What was the mass? The mass is 94 grams. So that is 94 times 10 power negative 3. G is 9.81. The vertical height is 0 0.90 centimeters. So it is times 10 power negative 2. 0 0.90 centimeters. So that is times 10 power negative 2. I press my calculator to find total energy. So from my calculator, this is 8.3 times 10 power negative 3. 8.3 times 10 power negative 3. That is total energy. Use your answer in Roman 1 to show that the angular frequency omega of the oscillations of the pendulum is 3.3. .3. So in, the, in above, we have total energy. So total energy is also going to be equal to a half m omega squared times x naught squared that is total energy half m omega squared x naught squared and total energy is 8.3 times 10 power negative 3 this is equal to a half the mass is 94 times 10 power negative 3 then times omega squared is what we want to find so this will be times omega squared the amplitude the maximum displacement was 12.7 centimeters. So this will be times 12.7 times 10 power negative 2. And this is squared. So I will just cross uh, multiply by 2. 8.3 exponent negative 3 times 2 divided by 94 exponent negative 3 divided by 12.7 exponent negative 2 squared. Then I find the square root. So the uh, omega is equal to 
radians per second after finding the square root. So you notice that this is approximately 3.3 radians per second as required. The period T of oscillation of the pendulum is given by that expression, where G is the acceleration of free fall, and L is the length of the pendulum. Use data from B to determine L. So remember T is equal to 2 pi over omega. Period is 2 pi over omega, and we have omega from above. So I will simply say that 2 pi over omega, which is 3.3, .3, is equal to 2 pi square root, you want to find L, so square root of L over 9.81, you see 2 pi has cancelled, so I'll square both sides and of course multiply, so I'll square, open brackets, 1 over 3.3, .3. close the bracket, squared, then times 9.81, and this is 0 0.9008. So L is 0 0.9008, which is approximately 0 0.90 meters. The piston in the cylinder of a car engine moves in the cylinder with simple harmonic motion. The piston moves between a position of maximum height in the cylinder to a position of minimum height as illustrated here. So it moves to a position of maximum height, to a position of minimum height. So maximum height is in that position, minimum height is in this position. That means the equilibrium position must be 9.8 divided by 2, which is 4.9 centimeters from the equilibrium position is going to be, um, or the maximum displacement x naught is going to be 9.8 over 2 which is 4.9, okay? The distance moved by the piston between the uh, positions is 9.8. The mass of the piston is 4640. At one particular speed of the engine, the piston accomplished 2,700 oscillations in one minute. Number of oscillations per unit time, that is maybe the frequency. You just convert the time into seconds. For the oscillations of the piston in the cylinder, determine the amplitude. So amplitude x naught is going to be 9.8 over 2. That is the distance between maximum and minimum position. So that is 4.9 in centimeters. Then the frequency. The frequency, so we know that frequency is the number of oscillations. So frequency is equal to number of oscillations by in time. Number of oscillations per in time. We have 2,700 oscillations. The time is one minute, which is 60 seconds. And I think 270, that is 44.5. So that is frequency is going to be 45, 45 hertz. Then the maximum speed. We now know very well that maximum speed V0 is equal to omega times X0. And we also know that omega is 2 pi f, or 2 pi over t. So the maximum speed v naught is going to be 2 pi times omega, which is 45, times the maximum amplitude, which is 4.9 times 10 power negative 2. And this is squared. So I get the maximum speed here. So from my calculator, the maximum speed is approximately 14 meters per second to two significant figures. Then the speed when the top of the piston is 2.3 centimeters below its maximum height. If this is the maximum height and this is the equilibrium position and this is the bottom height, this is maximum height 
this is the minimum height this is equilibrium so it is 2.3 below maximum height that means the value of x remember x is measured from equilibrium where this is zero the value of x is going to be at maximum that is 4.9 from equilibrium so we shall have 4.9 minus 2.3 which gives us 2.6 as x so we want to find the speed at the top uh, our went is 2.3 centimeters below its maximum height remember speed is equal to omega square root of x naught squared minus x squared so this is going to be omega remember is 2 pi f so this is going to be 2 pi times 45 square root of amplitude was 4.9 times 10 power negative 2 and this is squared minus x is now 2.6 times 10 power negative 2 which is squared i know very well people use this as the value of x because i know this expression is common to them they will use 2.3 but the english is saying 2.3 centimeters below its maximum height not above the uh, not below the equilibrium position not above equilibrium position so x is the distance measured from equilibrium position that's why i had to subtract 4.9 minus 2.3 so i press my calculator So from my calculator, this is 12 meters per second. The acceleration of the piston varies. Determine the resultant force on the piston that gives rise to its maximum acceleration. Want resultant force. And of course, we know that from Newton's second law, the resultant force is the mass times acceleration. And since we want maximum acceleration, I mean, we want the resultant force on the piston that gives rise to its maximum acceleration. We know that acceleration maximum is going to be negative omega, negative omega squared times x naught. But of course, in the calculation, we shall ignore the negative. So the force is going to be the mass, which is the mass, I think, was 64 grams. No, it was 640 grams, which is 0 0.64. Then times, the acceleration is going to be omega. And we got omega. Omega is 2 pi f. So this would be 2 pi times f, which is 45 that is omega squared then times I'm substituting for a naught as omega squared x naught so this would be times then x naught is 4.9 so that will be 4.9 times 10 power negative 2 so this is mass this is acceleration so I'm now pressing my calculator. This will be 0 0.64 times 2 times 4.9 exponent negative 2 times open brackets 2 pi times 45 squared. So this is giving me a F as 2507.5. 2,500.04 or approximately 2,500 newtons. A dish is made from a section of a hollow glass sphere. A dish fixed to a horizontal table contains a small solid ball as of mass 45 grams. So the mass is 45 as shown here. The horizontal displacement of the ball from the center C of the dish is X. Initially, the ball is, at, is held at rest, X equals to 3 centimeters. So this is going to be the maximum displacement 
or the initial maximum displacement. The ball is then released. The variation with the time t of the horizontal displacement x of the ball from point C is shown here. So we are seeing the horizontal displacement. The motion of the ball in the dish is simple harmonic motion with its acceleration given by this expression. Remember, G is acceleration of free fall and R is a constant that depends on the dimensions. Use the figure to show that the angular frequency omega of oscillations of the ball in the dish is 2.9 radians per second. That is easy. We know that angular velocity is equal to 2 pi divided by period. We check for the period from the graph. If I start from here at equals to 0, then after one compute cycle, I'm around here. The scale here is 0 0.1, so this is 2.2. So it means this is going to be 2 pi divided by 2.2. So when I press my calculator, I'm getting 2.9 radians per second. Use the information in A to determine R. In A, remember, we have that A is equal to uh, negative G over R. Compare with A equals to negative omega squared X. So it means omega is G over R. So omega squared is equal to G divided by R. So R is going to be G, which is 9.81, divided by omega, which is 2.9, but squared. I just press my calculator. So this is 1.16, or approximately 1.2 meters. Then calculate the speed of the ball as it passes over the center C of the dish. Speed. The center is where we have the maximum speed. Maximum speed is when the ball is passing here at the center because this is the equilibrium position. So the speed there is maximum. So we just use the expression for maximum speed or maximum velocity. So maximum velocity V0 is equal to omega times X0, which is going to be omega is 2.9 times um, maximum displacement is 3 centimeters, which is 3 times 10 power negative 3, I mean negative 2, to change it to meters. For my calculator, so this is 0 0.087. meters per second. Some moisture collects on the surface of the dish so that the motion of the ball becomes lightly damped. That means the amplitude of oscillation must decrease gradually. On the axis, draw a line to show the light, lightly damped motion of the ball for the first 5.0 seconds after the release of the ball. Now, don't always think that when they say draw a line, it is a straight line. Not at all. That's what confuses students every time. So it is lightly damped. There are oscillations, but the amplitude gradually reduces. So let's draw this for the first five seconds. So it will stop here. We can stop there because they want for the first five seconds. So the amplitude, we shall start with the same amplitude but it gradually reduces. So for you use a pencil to sketch this. Yeah, I've tried my level best to show that the amplitude is gradually decreasing. 
but the graph lines are crossing at the same values of time because the period is remaining the same. Let me repeat this using a greater thickness. Yeah, so the amplitude gradually reduces because the system is lightly damped. So that would be uh, the graph. So the graph is going to be within, but the graphs are meeting at these points because the period has not changed. A mass is suspended vertically from a fixed point by means of a spring, as illustrated here. The mass is oscillating vertically. The variation with the displacement x of the oscillations a of the mass is shown. So this is a graph of acceleration against time. Acceleration against time is shown here. Let me reduce the size so that it fits on one page. Okay. So we can look at the graph. First of all, you see that this side, it goes up to this point. On this vertical, the scale is, I think, uh, 0.5 divided by 2, that is 0 0.05. So this is like 1.4. That's 1.4. Yet here it goes up to 1.5. But the straight line stops around here. This is 1.1, 1.2. The straight line stops at 1.2 this side. Here it goes up to 1.5 negative. So that is not symphonic. Even though some part of it is a straight line, <coughs> the maximum uh, acceleration is not the same. Let's check the maximum amplitude. On this side, it goes up to one point i think on the x-axis the scale is also 0 0.05 so this is one point i mean 0 0.15 on the other side it is it's actually 1.0 on the other side it goes up to 1.0 but the straight line stops at at this point which is i think 0 0.9 stops at 0 0.9. Okay, let's try to answer the questions now. State what is meant by displacement of the mass on the spring. Of course, the displacement of the mass on the spring, this is now going to be distance moved by the mass in a given direction. Distance from a reference point, which is the equilibrium point, in a given direction. So this is the distance moved by the mass Different moved by the mass from a reference point. From a reference point in a given direction or in a specific direction.
So that is displacement. Then suggest how uh, figure 4.2 shows that the mass is not performing simple harmonic motion. I predicted that the mass was not performing simple harmonic motion. You see this part here. So the line is not straight, so the gradient is not constant. The line is not straight throughout. So the gradient is not constant. And if the gradient is not constant, we can't say we can't say that taxation is directly proportion to displacement. So it's not simple harmonic motion, even though the gradient is negative. The amplitude of oscillation of the mass may be changed. State the maximum amplitude for which the oscillations are simple harmonic. So from the graph, we saw that uh, at the bottom, the line stops being straight at 0 0.9. That means the simple harmonic motions only occur when uh, the maximum amplitude is the same on both sides. That's when where the straight line stops. So the straight line stops at 0 0.9. That means if there were to be simple harmonic oscillations, then the maximum amplitude is 0 0.9, for which the motion is simple harmonic, simple harmonic. It is just the straight line stops here. So the answer here is 0 0.9. It can be varied between 0 0.85 and 0 0.9. For the simple harmonic oscillations, that's when the amplitude is 0 0.9, use the figure to determine the frequency of the oscillations. Since it is a graph of acceleration against displacement, I'll simply use acceleration equals to negative omega squared times x. And I'll use the acceleration when the displacement is 0 0.9. And I think it is nega it is 1.2. So I'll use acceleration as 1.2 being equal to omega. Remember, omega is 2 pi f. So this would be 2 pi. I'm ignoring the negative in further calculations. So this would be 2 pi times f. But remember, this should be squared. Then times the displacement, which is 0 0.9 times 10 power negative 2. So I'll divide both sides. I'll divide both sides by 0 0.9 exponent negative 2. Then I, I define the square root. And then I divide by 2 pi. So this is giving me the frequency as 1.8 hertz. You can check. You can check by solving for f. Divide both sides, find the square root. So f is going to be 1.2 divided by 0 0.9 times 10 power negative 2 under square root. Again, divide by 2 pi. The maximum speed of, of the mass when, when oscillating with the simple harmonic motion is x of, of amplitude x naught is v naught. Remember, v naught is equal to omega times x naught. V can be positive or negative, so it means it depends on x naught. x naught can be positive or negative. When it is positive, v naught is positive. When it is negative, v naught is negative. And when x is 0, that means v is going to be, I mean, when x is x naught, then v is 0. Remember the equation? v equals to omega square root x naught squared minus x squared. If x equals to 0, v is equal to maximum, which is v naught. So for x equals to 0, v is maximum, which can either be positive or it can be negative because it is omega times x naught. And then, since the square root is positive or negative, so that can be positive or negative when x is 0. And if x is the same as x naught, whether positive or negative, v is automatically 0. So this is the point, and that is the point.
positive or negative x naught v0 so this is giving us an oval shape of a graph Is this over? Okay, so you can draw a better shape, which is over, better than mine. Using a pencil. Okay. So that is the graph. Remember the graph for V against displacement is always over in shape. Don't forget that. A ball of mass M is held on a horizontal surface by two identical extended springs as illustrated here. One spring is attached to a fixed point. The other spring is attached to an oscillator. An oscillator. The oscillator is switched off. The ball is displaced sideways along the axis of the spring and is, re is then released. The variation with it with the time t of the uh, displacement x of the ball is shown. You see that the amplitude is gradually decreasing when oscillations are still going on. So it means that is automatically light damping. So uh, what is meant by damping? So this is loss of energy. Loss of energy by an oscillating system due to dissipative forces. Instead, the evidence provided by the figure that the motion of the ball is damped. We see that the amplitude of oscillation decreases with the time. So since the amplitude of oscillation is decreasing with time, then the motion is damped. It is actually lightly damped. The oscillations A, I mean the acceleration A and the displacement X of the ball are related by the expression A is equal to negative 2K over M X. Compare with A equals to negative omega squared X, the defining equation of permanent motion. The mass M is 1.2 kilograms. Use data from the figure to determine the angular frequency omega of the oscillations of the ball. So we know that omega is equal to 2 pi over the period, or 2 pi f. So this is 2 pi over, let's check out the period. So if I start at equals 0, I'm starting at the peak. Then the next time I come back to the peak, that is at 0 0.8, that is one cycle. So the period is 0 0.8. So this will be divided by 0 0.8. Press the calculator. So from my calculator, this is 7.7.9. Use your answer in Roman 1 to determine the value of k. Remember here, omega is 2 pi. Omega squared is 2k over m. If we compare the two equations, omega squared is equal to 2k divided by m. So it means I will simply say that 7.9 squared is equal to twice k. m was given as 1.2. So 
I just press my calculator, I just press multiply, divide by two. Seven point nine squared times one point two divided by two. So this is approximately thirty seven. The oscillator is switched on. That means forced oscillations are, are into play. The amplitude of oscillation of the oscillator is constant. The angular frequency of the oscillations is gradually increased from 0 0.7 to 1.3 omega. Omega is the angular frequency. On the axis, show the variation with the angular frequency of the amplitude A of the oscillations. So since these are forced oscillations, uh, there will be maximum amplitude will occur when the driving frequency or the driving angular frequency balances with the natural frequency. If the natural angular frequency is omega, then it means when the driving frequency gets to omega, the amplitude must be maximum. So this is a resonant curve, and the maximum amplitude will be at this point. So we shall have uh, the peak. The peak is going to be there. So this is between uh, 1.3 and 0 0.7. So we have such a peak. The amplitude is going to be at 1.0 omega. OK, then when I make this to be bold, people will think it is bold. So the peak is going to be at 1.0 omega. Some sand is now sprinkled on the surface. The angular frequency of the oscillations again gradually increased from 0 0.7 omega to 1.3. So of course, are putting sand, we are increasing friction, we are increasing damping. And when we increase damping, we expect that uh, actually, we are going to expect that a maximum amplitude occurs at a slightly lower angular frequency than this one, and the, that means the peak shifts to the left, and the peak is going to be more flatter than the one that we have. So we are going to have something like this. The peak is more flatter than the one we have, and the peak is to the left of the one that we had. So the question is telling us, state two, Changes that occur to the line you have drawn in the, in the figure 4.3. So what changes occur to this line, number one? We know that the peak is going to be lower. The peak is lower. That is the amplitude at which maximum, I mean the amplitude is going to be lower. Number two, we know that the peak is going to be flatter or less, less sharp, as you can see. In number three, the peak is going to be at slightly, the peak is at slightly lower angular frequency. Oh, in other words, we can say the peak shifts to the left. It shifts to the left. Okay. So those are the uh, the changes that are going to occur. You even see on the line that have the second line we have drawn. The peak, first of all, is on the left of uh, omega. It is at a lower angular frequency. The peak is around here for the second line. And you see the amplitude is lower, so the peak is lower. You see the, the peak is even flatter compared to the first one, which is relatively sharper. Okay. A cylindrical tube sealed at one end has cross-sectional area A and contains some sand that the, the total mass of the tube is M. The tube floats upright in a liquid of density rho as illustrated here. 
The tube is pushed a short distance into the liquid and then released. State 2 forces that act on the tube immediately after it, 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 immediately after its release. Of course, the weight is there. It, is, it has not gone away. Whether it is released or not, the weight is there. But immediately it is released, it starts, of course, to experience an upthrust force. Upthrust due to the liquid. State and explain the direction of the resultant force acting on the tube immediately after it is released. Because it is displaced below equilibrium, immediately it is released, the upthrust is greater than the weight, so the resultant force is upwards. So the upthrust is greater the upthrust is greater than the weight. So the result uh, the resultant force is upwards. So, of course, weight does not change for this mass, for this body. But when you push it deeper, upthrust increases when you push it deeper because upthrust depends on depth. So, upthrust increases when you push it deeper. So, if it is pushed beyond the equilibrium position, the upthrust is greater than the weight. So, immediately when it is released, the resultant force is upwards, so it moves upwards. Okay, the acceleration A of the tube is given by this expression, where X is the vertical displacement of the tube from its equilibrium position. Use this expression to explain why the tube undergoes simple harmonic motion. So how do we see from this expression that the tube is undergoing simple harmonic motion? Note that A was cross-sectional area of the tube, which is constant. Rho is the density of the liquid, which is constant. G is acceleration due to gravity, which is constant, and M what is M? M is the total mass of the tube and the sun, which is also not changing. So we can simply say that A rho G and M are constants. Implying Acceleration is directly proportional to displacement. So A is the extra proportion to displacement because the others are constants. Number two, we say minus sign here. So the minus sign the minus sign indicates indicates that acceleration and Displacement are always in opposite directions. Or you can just say A and X are always in opposite directions because A and X have been given there. For the tube having cross section area 4.5 centimeters squared and mass 0.17 the period is 1.3 determine the angular frequency omega we already know that oh, we are already used to the fact that omega is 2 pi over t so this is 2 pi over the period which is 1.3 i just press my calculator 2 pi over t 
and this is 4.8 radians per second. Use your answer in Roman 1 and the expression in B to determine the density rho of the liquid. So from here we see if we compare with the general equation, acceleration is going to be negative omega squared x. We see that omega squared is equal to A rho g over m. So we notice that omega squared equals to A rho g divided by m. And this, is, this was actually 4.83. So I'll say 4.83, I want to just be more exact, squared, is equal to m, I think they gave us a as 4.5, we have to change it to meters squared, so it is 4.5 times 10 power negative 4, to change it to meters squared from centimeters squared, times the density which we want to find, that is times rho, times g which is 9.81, Divide by the mass, which is 0 0.17. So just cross multiply times 0 0.17 divide by 9.81 divide by 4.5 exponent negative 4. So this is giving me 900 kilograms per meters cubed. I can check it again. 4.83 squared times 0 0.17 divided by 9.81 divided by 4.5 exponent negative 4. Yes, it is 900. Or you can write 898.4. Kilograms per meters cubed, which is approximately 900. A spring is hung vertically from a fixed point. A mass, a mass m is hung from the other end of the spring, as illustrated here. So we have already seen a similar question. The mass is displaced downwards and then released. The subsequent motion of the mass is simple harmonic. So we shall draw a line along the center. That is at 12. I think 12 is the center. Let's check. The scale is 2 divided by 10, which is 0 0.2. So this is 14.2, 14.4. No. 14.2, 14.4, so this is 14.5, and this one should be um, half, 2.5 times 0 0.2, I subtract this from 10, so this is 9.5, negative. that is 9.5. So I want the center, you can check 14.5 plus 9.5 divided by 2. So the center is at 12. So I'll draw a reference line along 12. 12 is the center of the oscillations. It is the equilibrium position or the equilibrium length. So I'll draw a horizontal line here for just for reference. Okay. Determine, sorry, state, state one time at which the maxim, the mass is moving at max with maximum speed. This is a graph of a length against a time, and the speed is maximum when the body is passing equilibrium. So this point, that point, that point that point, that point. But note that when the length is increasing, the body is moving uh, downwards. When the length is decreasing, the, vo the body is moving upwards. So this part is downwards. Sorry, this part is upwards because the length is decreasing. No, it is upwards, yes, because the length is decreasing. Upwards, 
upwards. This part is downwards because the length is increasing. Uh, this is upwards because the length is increasing. So when the length is increasing, the body is moving upwards. When the length is decreasing, the body is moving. Now when the length is increasing, the body is moving downwards. And when the length is decreasing, the body is moving upwards because if it is moving downwards, it stretches the spring, L increases. So when you see the length is increasing, it's because it is moving downwards. If it is moving upwards, L decreases. So when you see L becoming smaller, it's because it's moving upwards. So we have seen here it is moving upwards, downwards, upwards, downwards, upwards, and so on and so forth. State what, what, uh, one time at which the mass is moving with the maximum speed. So you can find the times easy. The first one is here. The second one is there. The third one. The fourth one. The fifth one. And so on and so forth. So the values of time I expect you to get are 0 0.10 seconds, 0 0.30 seconds. 0 0.50 seconds, 0 0.70 seconds, and also 0 0.90 seconds. So n of those values of time, n of those values of time can fit in that bracket, that dash. One time at which the speed has maximum, I mean which the spring has maximum elastic potential energy. Maximum elastic potential Energy. Potential energy is maximum when x is maximum. So x must be maximum. x must be maximum. Where is x maximum? At t equals to 0, at t equals 0 0.2, at t equals to 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and so on and so forth. So we have t equals to 0, you could write 0 0.40, 0 0.80, any of those values, and so on and so forth, where the amplitude is, uh, is actually maximum. That's when the elastic potential energy is maximum. Note that when the length is increasing, the body is moving downwards, the spring is being stretched. Use data from the figure to determine for the motion of the mass, the angular frequency omega. So at this point, we know that omega is 2 pi divided by the period. So this is going to be 2 pi over the period. We check out the period. So if I start at t equals 0 from the peak, the next time I arrive at the peak, that is one cycle. So and this is 0 0.4. So the period is 0 0.4. So I just press my calculator, pi divided by 0 0.4. So omega is 16 radians per second. Then the maximum speed. Maximum speed is equal to omega times maximum displacement. Omega is, this is, this I got 15.7, I rounded off to 16. So I can say 15.7 times x naught. Let's check the maximum amplitude. So this is the maximum displacement because 12 is the equilibrium length. So this is 14.5 minus 12, which is 2.5 as the amplitude. So I will substitute here. Times 2.5 times 10 power negative 2. So this is 0 0.39. Alternatively, you could find a gradient. You could find a gradient where you would draw a tangent at any of these points because the speed is maximum when the graph is, when the body is passing equilibrium. So you draw a tangent at the equilibrium position and find, you try to find a gradient. Remember, it is a tangent. A tangent does not enter into the curve. 
it just touches the curve. So you draw a tangent and use it to find the gradient because the gradient will give us the speed. You can do that as an assignment. You find a gradient of the tangent at that point where the graph crosses the equilibrium position and the gradient is going to be actually the speed. The magnitude of the uh, maximum acceleration is now what we want to find. Remember, acceleration is equal to negative omega squared x. Maximum acceleration is going to be omega squared times x naught. We substitute. Omega was 15.7 times, sorry, this is going to be squared, times x naught, which x naught, uh, we have seen x naught as 2.5 times 10 power negative 2. So I press my calculator. So from my calculator, this is 6.2. 6.2 meters per second squared. Alternatively, you can look at acceleration maximum as being called omega times v naught maximum. And v naught maximum, you have it above. So this is another alternative. So this could be omega, which is 16 or 15.7 to more significant figures times 0 0.39. It will give you approximately the same value. The mass m is now suspended from two springs. There are now two springs. It means the spring constant has reduced. The springs have become uh, more steeper. So the spring constant is now greater because the springs are now more stiffer. Suggest and explain the change, if any, in the period of oscillations of the mass. The springs have now become stiffer. And if the springs are stiffer, that is the k value is, is now, um, the k value is actually going to be smaller. It means the springs are going to oscillate very fast. That means the period is going to be shorter. So uh, we have a greater spring constant. Is it a greater spring constant when they are joined in parallel? Yes, the spring constant is higher. Because when they're joined in parallel, we add the spring constant to get total spring constant. So one, because they want us to suggest and explain the change, if any, on the period. And since the spring constant is greater, yet the spring constant affects omega or the frequency, it also affects, affects the period. So we have a greater spring constant. In other words, the spring is uh, stiffness or greater stiffness. Uh, there is greater spring constant or greater stiffness. So the period is shorter or it is lower. When the spring is shorter, when you try to displace, when the spring is stiffer and try to, os to, to displace a mass to make it oscillate, the mass oscillates uh, very fast. It makes um, it, it, the period of its oscillations are very, very, the period of the oscillations is very small. Okay, so there is a greater spring constant, so the period is going to be shorter. Or you could say, the restoring force is greater for any given extension. The rest of wiring force will be greater for any given extension, so the period is going to be shorter. So the period is shorter. Or you can say the acceleration is greater
the accession is greater for any given extension so it also means the period is going to be shorter remember uh, acceleration is directly proportion to omega acceleration is equal to negative omega squared so if this is greater it means this is also going to be greater but remember omega is 2 pi over t so when this is greater t is smaller okay you can also talk about energy there will be greater energy or greater maximum speed for a given amplitude so that means a shorter period greater energy or maximum speed because maximum speed is the active portion to energy Okay. A hollow tube sealed at one end has a cross sectional area of 24 centimeters. The tube contains sand so that the total mass M is 0 0.23 kilograms. The tube floats. The tube floats upright in the liquid of density rho as illustrated here. The depth of the bottom of the tube below the liquid surface is H. What is very the density is rho, cross section area is A, depth is H. The tube is displaced vertically and then released. The variation with the time t of the depth H is shown here. So uh, H goes to 6, starting at equal to 0, H is 6. It goes to 2 and back to 6 and so on and so forth. So I will say 6 minus 2. Or 6 plus 2 divided by 2, that is 4. So at 4, we have the equilibrium position at h equals 4. So I draw a horizontal line along 4 to act as my reference equilibrium position. Okay, so there's equilibrium position along four, just for reference. Determine the amplitude in meters of the oscillation. So the amplitude is going to simply be six minus four or four minus two. So that is six minus four, which is two centimeters in meters, that is 0 0.02 meters. The, determine the frequency of oscillation of the tube in the liquid frequency term the frequency so frequency since we have um, we have just got the amplitude we can find the frequency by using the period we know that frequency is going to be 1 over the period which is 1 over let's find the period So if I start at t equals to zero at the peak, the next time I come back to the peak, that is one cycle, and I think that is at 0 0.6. So the period is 0 0.6. So this will be 0 0.6. I press my calculator. One divided by 0 0.6. So the period is 1.67 or 667 or approximately 1.7. I mean the frequency. Then the acceleration of the tube when h is maximum. We know that acceleration is equal to negative omega squared x, and we know that omega is actually 2 pi times f, or 2 pi over t, which is going to give me a better answer. So it means the acceleration is going to be omega, which is 2 pi, over the period which is 0 0.6 and this is squared I'm avoiding using f times x which is the amplitude and the amplitude was 0 0.02 
that's when um, of course accession is the active portion displacement so when h is maximum the accession is also maximum so I'm finding maximum acceleration so I'm checking my calculator So this gives me an acceleration of 2.2 meters per second. The frequency f of the oscillation of oscillation of the tube is given by the expression here, where g is the acceleration of free fall. Catch the density rho of the liquid in which the tube is floating. So they have given us the frequency, and we had the frequency somewhere here as 1 over 0 0.6 or 1.7 or 1.667. I'll use only three significant figures. So frequency is 1.67 should be equal to 1 over 2 pi square root A. What was A? Cross section area was 24 centimeters. We change it to meters squared. Um, mass was 0 0.23 kilograms, and then it is 9.81. So we just substitute straight away. So our cross sectional area is 24 times 10 power negative 4 to change it to meters times the density times g, which is 9.81, divide by. 0 0.23. I just cross multiply 1.67 times pi. Then I square because I want to remove the square root times 0 0.23 divided by uh, 24 exponent negative 4 divided by 9.81. So I'm getting uh, this, when I make row the subject, I'm getting row as 1075.6 kilograms per meters cubed. So it's approximately 1.1 times 10 power 3. The oscillations illustrated in the figure are undamped. In practice, the liquid does cause light damping. On the figure, draw a line to show light damping. So now light damping is easy. We just should show this by decreasing amplitude of oscillation. So since the period remains the same, then we shall show a decreasing amplitude of oscillation. So that is a light damped. It's light damped, the amplitude gradually reduces, but the frequency and the period have remained the same. Okay. A mass is undergoing symphonic motion with the amplitude x naught and maximum velocity v naught. Show that the variation show the variation with displacement x of the velocity v of the mass. Remember, just to remind you, velocity is equal to omega square root of x naught squared minus x squared. This is plus or minus. For x equals to 0. If x equals to 0, v is going to be plus or minus omega x naught. You get the square root. So this will be maximum velocity. So when x is 0, v is v naught negative or v naught positive. Then for x which is the same as x naught, v is always zero, whether it is positive or negative, after it is squared. So this is the point, and that is the other point. So if I sketch this, I've said the graph is always oval in shape. Okay. 
could have drawn it very well, but it is not looking nice. Yeah, you can draw a better one as long as it is an oval shape passing through those points. Okay. It's not a square, it's not a triangle, it's oval in nature. A straight stiff wire carries a constant current in a region of a uniform magnetic field of flux density, of uniform magnetic flux density. The angle theta between the direction of the current and the direction of the magnetic field is varied. The maximum force on the wire is F0. That is maximum force. We have maximum force when theta is 90 degrees. So that means, remember, F is equal to B sine theta. We have maximum force when theta is 90 degrees. So when theta is 90, F is F0. For theta equals to 90 degrees, F is F0. Okay. Then for theta equals to zero, F is going to be zero. You can check uh, another angle, but basically those two are enough for me to draw this graph. So this being a sine curve, it is not going to be a straight line, but it will be a curve of this nature. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If I say this is 30, that is 60, that is 80. So at 30, it is almost half of F0 at 30. When theta equals to 30 degrees, F is a half of F0. So I just look for the center. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think that is the center. So the graph should go through that point. Those are enough points. So I just face the curve. Like that. Okay. Then okay. a sinusoidal supply has frequency 250 hertz. And root mean square potential difference of 2.8 volts. On the axis of the figure, show quantitatively. That means we need to, uh, to put some values. The variation with the time t of the voltage V for one cycle of the varying voltage. So the frequency is... 250, that means the period is going to be 1 over 250, which is 1 divided by 250, that is 4 times 10 power negative 3, which is equal to 4 milliseconds. So in 4 milliseconds, I must have one cycle, so this would be half a cycle, a quarter. So I have must have maximum at 1 and at 3. Then uh, the amplitude. I want to find the amplitude. They have given us the root mean square as 2.8. We know that um, V root mean square is equal to V naught over root of 2. So V naught is equal to 2.8 times root of 2. So this is 3.9597, so it is approximately 4.0. 4.0 volts. So the graph will be have a peak at this point, that is a quarter cycle, and another peak at three, I think it is this point here. Yes. Then it goes to zero. Then at five, I think at five it goes back to the peak. Yes. So our graph will be like this.
Let me increase the thickness. Okay, so that is the graph. You can draw a better one using a pencil, but what is very important are the limits, are the points where the graph passes. They are the most important points. Okay, I think it is the same graph here. It is the same graph on the next page. It is just a typing error, so this is a repetition. It is the same uh, procedure, so I'll just sketch it for completeness. One particular fusion reaction may be represented by this equation. This is, of course, nuclear physics, but just for completeness, because it was part of these equations. The variation with the nucleon number A of the binding energy per nucleon is given as that. On the figure, mark on the line the position of uranium. Of course, that is the highest nuclear number, so uranium will be almost at the extreme end. Then barium 141, krypton 90, uh, 92. At the peak, remember we have iron, which is 56. So 92 could be somewhere here. So this is Kr. Then barium could be should be in between krypton and um and uranium, but 141 is very close to 92 than it is to 32, 35. So barium will be more closer to krypton than to uranium. So that is that question. You, so you should be able to do this. This is very easy. It's extremely easy. Okay, next, explain what is meant by the natural frequency, natural frequency of vibration. Here a system is uh, vibrating with no loss or gain in energy in the absence of dissipative forces. So the frequency at which a body will vibrate uh, when you're free to do so in the absence of any dissipative force is what we call the natural frequency. So frequency at which a body will vibrate when free to do so in the absence of dispative dispative resistive forces that is natural frequency frequency at which a body will vibrate when free to do so in the absence of dispative resistive forces so here there is no loss or gain in energy a block of metal is fixed to one end of vertical spring the other end of the spring is attached to an oscillator as shown here. The amplitude of oscillation of the oscillator is constant. The variation uh, of the amplitude x naught of the oscillations of the block with the frequency f of the oscillations is shown here. So this is a resonance curve or resonant curve. Name the effect. This is automatically resonance. State and explain whether the block is undergoing 
damped oscillations. Of course, if there were no damped oscillations, this peak would be infinite. It would be extremely sharp, very sharp. But since it's not, it is not infinite, then we said uh, the peak is not sharp. Or the peak is not infinite. peak is not infinite so damped oscillations so damped oscillations I'm saying if there were no damped oscillations the peak would be infinite it would be as sharp as that but since you see it is relatively occurring at a certain range of, of frequencies then we say uh, the peak is not infinite, so there are damped oscillations. State one example in which the effect in ab above is useful. Of course, resonance is very useful in many effects. Number one, we talk about magnetic resonance imaging. Number two, we talked about microwave oven cooking number three you can talk about tuning circuits this one is useful in tuning circuits of tvs and radios number three you can talk about quartz crystal the quartz crystal to produce ultrasound Oh, the quasi crystal to the quasi crystal in watches to keep timing. All those are some of applications of resonance. MRI, that is magnetic resonance imaging, or sometimes it's called in nuclear magnetic resonance imaging. A metal plate is made to vibrate vertically by means of an oscillator, as shown here. So we have a metal plate, uh, which is on an oscillator, and there is sand placed on top. Some sand is sprinkled on top. And the variation with the displacement y of the acceleration a of the sand on the plate is shown here. This, this harmonic motion. Here it is a straight line. Here it goes up to 8. Here it goes also up to 8. Yeah, I think it is simple harmonic motion. So the first question says, use the figure to show how it can be deduced that the sand is undergoing sympharmonic motion. So we have seen that is a straight line. We see that is a straight line going through the origin. Accession is directly proportional to displacement. We see that it also has a negative gradient. This is a negative gradient. So accession and displacement are always in opposite directions. So we say straight line. through the origin indicates acceleration is directly proportional to displacement Number two, the negative gradient negative gradient shows acceleration and displacement 
are in opposite directions. Capture the frequency of oscillation of the sun. Of course, we know acceleration is going to be negative omega squared y. Since they have given us uh, displacement as y, today let's use y, not x. And we know that omega is 2 pi times f. So I'll just take it, since it is a straight line through the origin, I can just take the acceleration with its corresponding displacement. I will take the maximum acceleration for this matter. Um, maximum acceleration, because here it is, the scale on the vertical is 1 divided by 5, which is 0 0.2. 1, 2, and a half. So 0 0.2 times 2.5, which is going to be, is it 2.5? 0 0.2 times 2.5, which is 0 0.5. So this is going to be 4.5. So the maximum acceleration is 4.5, either plus or minus. So this is going to be 4.5 equals 2, ignoring the minus sign in the calculation. Omega is 2 pi f, so this will be 2 pi f, and it is squared times. The maximum displacement is, isn't it 8? Yes, it is 8. So this is times 8 centimeters, which is going to be, I mean millimeters, which is 8 times 10 power negative 3. So just to divide 4.5 by 8 power negative 3, I'll find the square root. Then I divide by 2 pi. And this gives me 3.8. 3.8. The amplitude of oscillation of the plate is gradually increased beyond 80 millimeters. The frequency is constant. At one amplitude, the sand is seen to lose contact with the plate. Note we saw in one of the examples that uh, the object on top will lose contact when it is at the maximum height. And at that point when it loses contact, the object uh, moves almost at the acceleration due to gravity. It is just under the influence of gravity when it loses contact with the plate, which plate is attached to the vibrator or the oscillator. So state the position of the plate. For the plate when the sand first loses contact with the plate, state the position of the plate. So this one is at maximum displacement. It is at maximum displacement upwards or above equilibrium position. To lose contact when it is at the highest point above the equilibrium position. Then capture the acceleration. So when it just leaves the plate, acceleration is equal to acceleration due to gravity. So when it just leaves the plate, acceleration is going to be 9.81. But remember, acceleration is negative omega, but acceleration is equal to negative omega squared x. Ignoring the negative, 9.81 is going to be 2 pi times. If the frequency has not changed, this is 3.8, and this is squared times the displacement y naught. This was y. So I want to find y naught. So I just say 9.81 divided by that bracket. So this is giving me approximately 17 millimeters that is 0 0.17 so it is 0 
this to 0 0.017 millimeters which when I multiply by a thousand to change to millimeters to 17.2 millimeters state two conditions necessary for a mass to be undergoing simple harmonic motion those are very easy acceleration is directly proportional to displacement acceleration is directly proportional to displacement number two acceleration is directed towards the fixed point or acceleration and displacement are always in opposite directions so those are the two conditions for the body for the mass to be undergoing simple harmonic motion okay a trolley of mass 950 grams is held on a horizontal surface by means of two springs as shown here p and q we have seen a similar question but, but maybe just edited each having a spring constant k is 2 for 230 newtons per meter are always extended the troll is displaced along the line of the springs and then released here they have given us a variation with the time t of the displacement x okay state and explain whether the oscillations of the troll are heavily damped critically damped or lightly damped let's check the amplitude First, we start with this amplitude. We move to this one, to this one. The amplitude is gradually decreasing, so this is slightly damped. Amplitude decreases gradually. Amplitude decreases gradually as oscillations continue. So, lightly damped. It is lightly damped. Suggest so the cause of damping. What causes damping? This is the troll is moving over a surface. There could be air resistance, there could be uh, friction between the wheels and the surface. So, damping, remember, is loss of energy. So, we can say loss of energy. due to friction between between the wheels and the surface or due to uh, air resistance on the trolley loss of energy due to air resistance on the trolley so those would cause the system to the oscillations to die out air resistance or friction between the wheels and the surface okay Accession A of the trolley of the mass is given by that. Remember to compare with A equals to negative omega squared x. So catch the angular frequency omega. When you compare this and this, you notice that omega squared is equal to 2k divided by m. So just substitute. This is going to be 2 times k. I think k was 230. The mass was... Um, what was the mass? 950. The mass was 950 grams. So this is going to be 
950 divided by 1000, that is 0 0.95. So we find the omega from the square root. 2.230 divided by 0 0.95 root of the answer. So this is 22.00, which is approximately 22. The time the time t1, what is t1 from the graph? If we start from here, at this point, that is half a, uh, one full cycle. At T1, that is, another, that is half a cycle. So one full period and a half. So T1 is T plus T a half. So T1 is equal to period plus a half of a period. So we just need the period. Period is 2 pi divided by omega, which is going to be 2 pi divided by 22. Divided by 22. So the period is 0 0.286 seconds. So the time t1 is going to be t plus a half t is 1.5t. So this is 1.5 times 0 So this time T1 is 0 0.43 seconds. 0 0.43 seconds. A YouTube contains a liquid as shown in the figure. We have seen a question about uh, the uh, YouTube. So the length of the liquid is L, the displacement is X. So we notice that this total displacement here is going to be x plus x, which is twice x. That is the excess pressure in one of the arms that contributes to the pressure, I mean to the force, restoring force. Okay, total length of the liquid column is L. The column of the liquid is displaced so that the change in height of the liquid in each arm of the U-tube is x, as shown above. The liquid in the U-tube uh, then oscillates with a simple harmonic motion such that the acceleration is given by that. Remember to compare with acceleration is equal to negative omega squared x. You see what omega equals 2. Calculate the period t. So we know that omega squared is equal to 2g divided by l. Omega squared is going to be 2 times 9.81 divided by the length l, what is l? L is given as 0, 19.0, 19.0 centimeters to meters, that is 0 0.19. So that is omega squared. So this is giving me 103.26. Then omega alone is going to be the square root of the answer, which is 10.2. Omega alone is 10.2. But remember, period is equal to 2 pi over omega. So the period is going to be 2 pi divided by 10.2. So this divided by 10.2. So the period is 0 0.62 seconds. The variation with the time t of the displacement x is shown here. You see that the amplitude is actually decreasing uh, gradually, but the oscillations are still continuing. The period of the oscillation of the uh, liquid column is of mass 10.0 grams is t. So period is t. That's one cycle. The oscillations are damped. Suggest one cause of damping. We have seen this is now a liquid. Damping is loss of energy. So this will now be loss of energy due to uh, viscosity of the liquid, friction within the liquid. It can be viscous drug and so on and so forth. So one cause of damping that is going to be loss of energy since this is a liquid now. The friction is due to the viscosity of the liquid or viscous drug.
or the friction between the walls of the tube and the liquid. So loss of energy due to friction between the walls of the tube and the liquid molecules. It can be on the liquid molecules. It can be friction within the liquid itself or the liquid molecules itself or friction within the liquid. It can be friction within the liquid itself or it can be uh, due to viscous drug. You can say viscous drug or viscous of the liquid. That is what is causing loss of energy. There's no any other because this is a liquid in a U-tube shape, a U-shaped tube. There's, there could be friction between the molecules and the walls of the container. There could be friction between the molecules themselves. That causes energy to be dissipated. Okay. Calculate the loss in total energy of the oscillations during the first 2.5 periods of the oscillations. First 2.5 periods. So we know that energy is equal to a half m omega squared x naught squared. So we are going to find the difference in energy. That is going to be the loss. The difference in energy is going to be a half. The mass is the same. The mass of the liquid was, I think, 18, was it 18 grams? The mass is 18.0 grams, 18.0 grams. So I'll say this is times 18 times 10 power negative 3 to change it to kilograms. Omega, we got omega was, I think, 10.2, but squared it was 1, 0, what? Omega squared was 10, 1, 0, 3. I'll use 1, 0, 3 for omega squared. You can use 10.2 and square again, but 103 is fine. That is omega squared times. Now the difference in x naught. At the start, what is x naught? At the start, x naught is 2.0. Then uh, after two and a half cycles, this is one cycle, two cycles, half a cycle is here. Two and a half cycles is somewhere here. I think it is, it is 0 0.95 because each small square on the vertical is 0 0.1, but it is in the center here. So it is 0 0.95 centimeters. So this is going to be, initially it is 2.0 times 10 power negative 2. This is squared minus, we are, we are getting a difference in the x naught squared. The next one is after 2.5 cycles, 0 0.9 times 10 power negative 2, and that is also squared. Or you can find the energy at the start and the energy after 2.5 cycles. That is two and a half cycles. I'm just checking my calculator without wasting time. So from my calculator, I am getting 2.9 times 10 power negative 4. You can also check yours. 2.9 times 10 power negative 4. So I sub, I got this. This was the initial value of x naught. Before the three, then this was the value of x naught after two and a half oscillations. But remember, x naught individually is squared. We don't subtract before we square. We square each of them. Or find the energy using x naught at 2.0 first. Repeat the same for x naught 
equal to 0 0.95, then subtract and see what you get. I think this is the last equation. A U tube contains the liquid as shown in the figure here. It is almost the same. The total length is L, the column of the liquid is displaced so that the change in height of the liquid from the equilibrium in each arm of the tube is X as shown. The liquid in the U-tube then oscillates such that its acceleration A is given by that. Remember to always compare with A equals negative omega squared X for further calculations. Show that the liquid column undergoes simple harmonic motion. There is no any other way to show this apart from looking at this expression. Number one, you notice that G is acceleration of free fall, L is the length of the liquid column. So we say that 2G over L is a constant. And if it is a constant, then acceleration is directly Sorry about that. I don't know what happened, but sorry about that. So we are saying um, that two, two G over L is a constant. So acceleration is directly proportional to displacement. That's number one. Number two, you see that there is a minus sign. So the minus sign shows that acceleration and displacement are in opposite directions. Hence, simple harmonic motion. So if these two, the minus sign is there and 2g over l is a constant, we conclude that that is simple harmonic motion. Okay. The variation with the time t of the displacement x is shown in the figure. We still see that this is a decreasing amplitude. The amplitude is decreasing. Use data from the figure to determine the length L of the liquid column. Okay, remember I told you we have to compare uh, this equation here with A equals to negative omega squared X. We see that omega squared is 2G over L. So we can use that here. So omega squared is 2G over L. Omega squared is 2G over L, but we can find omega. We know that omega is also 2 pi over T. Omega is also 2 pi over T. So we're just going to equate here. We are going to equate these two equations to so that we find L. So it will be 2 times 9.81 divide by L, that is omega squared. I'll also square this side, so this would be uh, omega squared, this would be 2 pi over the period. What is the period from the graph? If I start at t equals to 0 from the peak, the next time I reach the, another peak, that is one period, so that is 0 0.50. So this will be over 0 0.50, and this is going to be squared. So I'll just divide that. Pi by zero point five 
squared then I get open bracket 2 times 9.81 divided by the answer so this is giving me L as 0 0.124 0 0.124 meters you can simplify that the oscillations shown in the figure are damped suggest one cause of this damping you have said damping is loss of energy due to due to now here you can talk about friction within the liquid friction within the liquid you can talk about friction between the walls and the liquid or you can talk about you can just talk about a viscous drug friction due to a loss of energy due to viscous drug or viscosity of the liquid as simple as that and last but not least calculate the ratio total energy of oscillations after 1.5 complete oscillations over the total initial energy of oscillations so energy is equal to a half m omega squared x naught squared let this be the total energy so energy after i will just find the ratio here the ratio is going to be total energy after 1.5 complete oscillations a half is the same m omega squared is the same what is important is x naught 1.5 complete oscillations what is x naught so this is at 0 0.5 that is one cycle and at 0 0.75 in a half a cycle so this is going to be i think that is 1.3 yes it is 1.3 the amplitude is 1.3 so this will be times one point three and this is squared divide by total initial energy of oscillations which is going to be a half m omega squared initial amplitude is i think the initial amplitude is two so this is going to be into two squared so half m omega squared those ones have cancelled so you remain with one point three over two point zero and this is squared what's this ratio so this is giving me 0 0.4225 or approximately 0 0.42 and that is uh, the total that is the ratio yes this marks the end of oscillations and i hope this was useful i'm sorry if i made some errors you can always raise the errors i'm human i'm bound to make mistakes but i've tried my level best where you didn't understand you can always leave a comment i can always try to record a short video to clarify that point thank you for following thank you for being with me and do not forget to share these videos with your friends in the same class Thank you. We meet in AS. Next will be AS videos. That is paper two specifically.